Hi, everyone. It is Fat Mascara. It is Friday. No, it's not. It's Wednesday. Wow. We are coming to the long end of the stretch of just a sabbatical. That's a, so actually, I want to do a little housekeeping before we get into today's Wednesday episode. She will be back on the mic, actually, with this Friday's interview. She has this great interview. Then we're taking a short break to get our summer season sorted. And then we'll both be back doing our Wednesday episodes starting May 29th. So that said, there were clearly some people we've had on the show in the last two and a half, three months that you really liked and responded to. So we're both thinking of ways to incorporate more of them into the show because we're always trying to evolve fat mascara. Make sure. Quality sleep is essential. That's why the Sleep Number Smart Bed is designed for your ever evolving sleep needs. Need a bed that's firmer or softer on either side? Helps you sleep at a comfortable temperature? Sleep Number smart beds let you individualize your comfort, so you sleep better together. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now, save 50% on the Sleep Number limited edition smart bed for a limited time. For J.D. Power 2023 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. This episode of Fat Mascara is sponsored by BetterHelp. Listen, we all carry around different stressors, big and small. Therapy is a safe space to get those things off your chest. Plus, it can help you develop coping skills that make your life easier. I will give you an example. If you've listened to this podcast for a while, you've probably heard me say it to Jess or to a guest, reframe. Well, I learned that technique from a therapist. Here's an example. Now that I'm a freelance writer and podcaster, I get lonely working from home and I feel like I'm never gonna get to collaborate on projects again. And that's the truth. Reframe, I get to choose which projects I work on. So I'm in control of what I work on. And if I want to collaborate more with others, I don't have to ask anyone's permission. I can just do it. See what I did there? That's reframing. If you've been thinking about starting therapy or are looking for someone to help you process things and give you coping skills, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash mascara today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash mascara. Again, betterhelp.com slash mascara. You'll know real when you get it. It'll say eBay Authenticity Guarantee and you'll feel it. Maybe it's a head-turning handbag, a watch that says it all, jewelry that makes you look like the gem, sneakers and streetwear so fresh every step feels fly. When it comes to style and luxury, eBay gets it. They're making sure the things that you love are checked by experts. Not just any experts, specialized experts. Real people who love this stuff. With real hands-on authentication experience. So when you see that shiny blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, shop with confidence. Every inch, stitch, sole, and logo is verified authentic through a detailed inspection. That's how you know that eBay's got your back. Because when you finally step into those sneakers, put on that watch, get your real gold glow up, swing that handbag over your shoulder, or step out in that streetwear, you'll realize that feeling is unlike any other. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that feeling of real is always in reach. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. We're giving you what you want while also staying true to our own journalistic principles, things we want to talk about, and just immersing you in all of the beauty culture. So hopefully that's coming across. But if you're missing Jess's voice, like I am, she will be back May 29th. Okay, moving on from the housekeeping, let me introduce you to our final guest co-host, Erica Metzger. So remember when I asked you all to share some of your favorite discontinued beauty products so we could look into what happened to them? Well, a lot of you did. We couldn't get to everybody's products, so we're going to help out a few of you. But the person that helped me do the research to find you new products that were like your favorites, I called her the beauty detective. She did not ask for that title, but that is Erica Metzger. So Erica is the founder of Beauty Loop, a weekly newsletter that reaches beauty journalists, PR executives, and industry insiders. If you actually scroll down in the show notes here on this episode, the episode recaps, just, I mean, people know this, right? Like they're always there. You click through the fatmascara.com website, and then there's going to be all the things we talked about in the episode, including Erica's Beauty Loop newsletter, if you're interested in signing up for that. She also has her 
own website called Virtual Beauty Closet. And that's where she documents launches in the beauty industry. That's also why I thought she'd be really helpful with this beauty detective work because she has an encyclopedic knowledge of new products and products from the past like 10, 20 years. Because before she started those two companies, she was the beauty, fashion, and travel director at Better Homes and Gardens. And she's also written for Refinery29, Women's Health, Cosmopolitan, 17, and Shape. Whew, okay. Erica's the best. She's here. Let's welcome her to the Fat Mascara Studio. Erica, hi, hi, hi. Welcome to Fat Mascara. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, this is fun. <laughs> Erica, I've known for years. So this is like, I'm not, we don't, I don't have to get to know you. So I'm not going to like make you go through your whole bio and all that. I want to get right into it because if Erica's name sounds familiar, that's because maybe two, was it two and a half months ago we started this whole, you're going to be my beauty detective? I think it was. Yes, time flies. I've been hard at work, Jen. I've been uh, <laughs> digging into this project. <laughs> I like kosher. This is not what Erica does for a living, though. I don't know. This could be your new sidekick, the beauty detective. But we were talking about discontinued products and how frustrating that can be. And I was like, you know who can help us? Erica, because you seem to have an encyclopedic knowledge of products coming out. Well, yes. Uh, you know, with my website, Virtual Beauty Closet, that's my second digital product. I just, as an editor, I feel a responsibility to know what's going on. And it's just so hard to keep up with everything. So I'm glad you reached out about this because I, I totally empathize with any kind of listener or any person who can't find a product that they love, 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 and they have to find a replacement because that's kind of the world we live in now with beauty, right? There's, that's just the beauty cycle. Yeah. It, they don't stay around that long. I was just talking about this the other week and then we don't hear when a brand closes when they never, they're not going to put an Instagram reel about like, we're discontinuing your favorite lipstick unless they're like reformulating. So it's so frustrating. Have you ever had a product like that you miss from the olden days? I can't think of something that I'm like, I wish existed from the past, but I have a few things now that if they disappeared, I would really be at a loss. I have like two products now that I'm just, I keep trying to find things that are similar because I don't want that to happen to me. And I have not found a replacement yet. In case they yeah. discontinue it. What are the two products? So that Color Science 3-in-1, I, it's in like an ISBF, but it ha, it's like a concealer too. You know that, that formula. Yes. And as I've gotten older, Jen, the situation under the eyes is... Not to hate on, not to, I, I like to be staying in a positive realm, but like there's something about that formula when I feel like I'm the crypt keeper or I just feel so like I can't go out in the world. I put that under my eyes and it's just, not only is it like does what a concealer kind of does brighten, it also kind of, it's moisturized. It feels like a whole treatment and I'm doing something good for my eyes. I just love it. it just, and it has sunscreen. And right? it has sunscreen. So it just feels like I'm doing so much with so little and you only need like a teeny amount. I, it's kind of expensive, but I like, I really, after we talk, I think I'm going to buy another one just to have as, I think I have one backup. I need more. We're, she's scaring herself into I'm getting nervous, uh, hoarding mentality. Because I know your audience will probably. Now they're going to all go buy it and it's going to be sold yeah, out. And I'm a, listen, I'm a grown up. You know what I mean? Like an, I've had eyes under eye circles since like my twenties, but like this is like for your forties. I feel like everybody in their forties needs this product for sure. Oh, and Jen, you can put your concealer on top. Like you can top it with concealer when you want to be more extra. Yeah, but this is every day. Yeah. Huh. It's also, that sounds like it would be good for people who are like, concealer gets creasy. I don't know. Then this is just like a little something to help you out. It's the something you need, Jen. And I don't, no okay. one's replicated it. No one has replicated it. Since we're not going to read like the whole product. By the way, everybody knows this, but in the show notes, we always have a link to an episode recap. That is where, if you heard us mention a product, it's there. So which we will be mentioning more products because you're finding these replacements. Yes. Wait, what was the other must never be discontinued product for you right now? It's Lancome Intimate, the lipstick. It's the best matte, again, for somebody who doesn't like dry lips, but the colors are gorgeous. It's like sort of slightly moisturizing, but it gives you kind of that cool effect, right? Like everybody kind of wants to have that matte effect. Although when they're in that matte mood, the colors are gorgeous. I'm so obsessed with this formula and the tube is like clicky. So like it does not come off in your bag, which I've had so many formulas that I like Ooh. just like pop off and like ruin the inside of my bag. Honestly, it's one of my favorite products of all time. Truly. What's your shade? I have like four shades. I have a, like, wait, okay. wait, I have one right here. Wait, at French Idol. I like, or that might just be French Idol, Rose, Lancome. That's a bright one. There's like a neutral one I wear all the time. I don't 
Which one is it, Jen? That one, I don't have it. There's, It's in my bag. But it's more about the formula, it sounds like. It's like cushiony. It fills in your lines. I'm like, things are happening to me, my face, every day that I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? I, things are happening. Jen, I've been writing about like ma- beauty for like middle-aged women my entire career, to be frank with you. You know, that's kind of my journey and my career. And like, yeah, only I, now- I've known you for years. You were in your early 20s, like Ladies Home Journal, yeah. which was a, a more mature reader, Absolutely. customer, et cetera. And I yeah. was in that head, like I tried so hard to imagine it. Like, oh, what would no, that now be? now you're here. I'm here. <laughs> and when I find something, I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, no. I get it. It's, I'm, it's the truth for everybody, I think, when they find that thing that works for them. But like, especially- as you have more concerns that you worry about, you know, when you're 21, everything looks freaking good. It really does. A lot of things look good on you. So enjoy. Not to offend our our listeners in their teens and 20s, which I know there's many of you, but you're lucky while you have it. Enjoy it. It's empowering. Enjoy it. Enjoy your 20s and 30s for that matter. Yeah. But I know this feeling, this feeling that we heard from listeners because I was sending you the notes and things on people who got obsessed with a product and then it became discontinued. Honestly, we could not do this for everyone because I got a lot of requests. But Erica, how did you go about this, by the way? I know we're going to talk about like four for four of our listeners, but like, how did you go about this process when you were trying to find discontinued product replacements? I mean, at first I just started with Google, like as we all do, everybody does. You don't have to be a beauty expert to do that. But I just to kind of see what these products were and see if I could just like match them from my own knowledge base and every product I've seen. And I was, I'll I'll be honest with you, Jen, I was stumped because these replacements are like so specific. So what I could, you know, I know you, your listeners can do, they can go down the Reddit hole, which you can find a lot of great ideas that way you can Google. I went to experts and brands to try to get them a little more insights and tips that they can kind of take when they're looking for. Erica knows everybody in the beauty (laughs) industry. She's being humble. Like she has access to, for example, there's a Clinique product. She just like literally just emailed Clinique and they get back to her right away and help her. So... This is like a very particular set of skills. <laughs> like a lay person can't do this. They could like email a company and be like, I miss this. When are you bringing it back? And maybe they're just going to send you another product in their lineup maybe, but Erica's going to help you out. So I'm going to read a couple of these notes that we got, and then we're going to see if we can help these people. The first up was our listener, Anna or Anna. What's up, girl? Hi. She said, I've been on the hunt for the replacement to RMS nail polish in luminizer for years. Nothing I found is quite as good. She wore it on her wedding day and she says, quote, it looked bomb, TBH, end quote. It's a subtle neutral shimmer, not pearl, not unicorn sparkle, not glittery. When she sent this, you and I, first of all, I was like, I don't remember the RMS nail polishes. Did you? No. And I don't know if it just like disappeared. The Swiss cheese that sometimes is my brain, like I love that, like, it's connected to a special event. How amazing is that? But also how challenging is that? It also kind of really ups the stakes in terms of, like, really wanting to get the perfect shade. So this one, I had to reach out to Julie Kandelic. She's an NYC. You know her. She's she's a celebrity manicurist, Emily Blunt, Selena Gomez, lots of great celebrities, and she's awesome and cool. And I figured she'd be great because she just knows colors and is always, you know, her kit's vast. And she was saying this is a tricky match. Because she was saying it's like a warm shimmer. Like these undertones are kind of, they're like very particular. It's golden. She remembered it, didn't she? She Yeah, she knew. But she was also like, it's so specific. She gave some specific like recommendations, but also like just good advice for anyone on this journey. If they find themselves trying to find things. So first, okay, we went over tip. Tip number one was the Google, the brand name, the color, and then add the word dupe. I mean, that sounds obvious, but there's this whole industry dedicated to dupes, as I'm sure you've covered before. So you might find a lot of information. Somebody's already done the research for you. Tip two was Poshmark and eBay. And she said you could do this. I thought this to was- To get the original. To get the to original, find other people. if yeah. you can find it. But she said, and also, I didn't know this, you could do ISO in search of on Poshmark, and you can put out like a blast to find out something very specific. So you might be able to have these sellers like reach out directly to you. However- Having reported on secondhand beauty for Cosmo. I read your article for Cosmo. I'm going to link to it too. Yeah, it was really helpful. I think anyone who wants to dive into the secondhand beauty world of shopping, that is such a good article just in terms of like everything to think about, some really good online marketplaces, and just, you know, some risk factors that we all should think of. Okay. She also said you could DM the brand to ask. And I do think 
Twitter, Instagram, like you might get some kind of a response where they're going to, a lot of these companies have a backup suggestion, which it might be on their website, or they might just get back to you as good customer service. And then she said you could go to Orly. There's a Orly Color Labs in LA and they customize nail polish colors and you could do a Zoom. And I didn't know about this. And she said it's $24. Anna, are you in Los Angeles? I don't know where Anna is. Yeah. You could bring an old empty, half empty bar or like then just put it on and then tweak it as you go. Yeah. And she said this is $24 a bottle, which... It's as much as a Chanel nail polish. Yeah. So I thought- But it's custom. Custom. And then she also just, she said maybe Beauty Pie Wonder Color Nail Polish, Gold Drops. Oh, okay. So these are her, this is for Anna. Okay, listen, I, Anna. Yeah. I asked for some, I was just like, well, can I we just have, have some specifics maybe just in case- Beauty Pie Wonder Color. Yeah. It's I know Gold it. Drops. Yes. And then this is not, definitely not a match, but it is luminizing. It's Dermalect, Luminous Brightener, and Perfector. So I know that one. It has like an opalescence, I would say, to it, yeah. not a shimmer. And I think that's kind of what RMS Luminizer from all the swatches I looked up to has. Like, it's like your nails, but better, right? Yeah. So it's not too sparkly. I feel like the Wonder Color from Beauty Pie might be a little warm and sparkly, but the other one sounds really good. And it has like benefits too, right? Yeah, I like that. I feel like that one I think I actually would like for my nails. Doing this was actually kind of fun, Jen, because I feel like whenever we do this beauty research, we kind of find some good nuggets for ourselves, right? Selfishly. Always. <laughs> this was the only one there. I was like, I actually think I have something too for Anna. Manucurist, the which I've talked about on the pod before, is a French brand that does like a quote unquote clean gel formula that d comes off easily. But they just came out with a non gel. This is just like a traditional polish, and they're almost like skincare for your nails. And there's five of them, and one of them's like a blush color, and it's called Active Glow. And the one there's two. There's one called Active Bright, and one called Active Shine, which are strengthening, moisturizing, all that good stuff for your nails. But the Active Bright has this like a luminous pearl to it. Like it almost, if your nails were yellow, it's almost like a whitening toothpaste for your nails. Oh, I love that. I love <gasps> Did that. Did I just write the copy? Did I just write the copy for that? So the Active Bright, I think would be closest, but then if you want a little bit more shimmer, Anna, the Active Shine ups the pearl factor. Did we just give you like, I think we gave her like four. She got a lot of tips. Okay. Anna really got a lot. Helps. We want to reenact your wedding yeah. day with you, Anna. So <laughs> good, good luck with that. Okay, next up, we had a listener, Noelle. No note. I love you, Noelle. Get the business done. She just texted me or DMs me, Clinique Naturally Glossy Mascara in Jet Black. That was around for years. I remember that mascara. Yeah, that one was familiar to me too. I, I mean, I think our generation for sure is like Clinique. We sort of know like everything on the lineup in a way, maybe. So this again, this is where being a beauty editor was very helpful because I reached out to Clinique and they, I appreciated. They reached out to their global education team. And they came back with high impact mascara. That's the formula they're recommending. And then I actually was able to get my hands on a sample. So I tried it, Jen, and it's a great formula. It's so like clean going on. You know, it's, it doesn't deposit a ton of product. It's almost like you put it on and your lashes just start looking really good and long, slightly thicker, but you're like, where's the product? Oh, you're not seeing the spiky clumping or the lengthening. Not lengthening. at all. You're just... It's a nice, nice formula. So I feel good recommending that one. Like I will, I'm going to use it. It's going to be in my mascara wardrobe moving on. So I hope Noelle likes that one. Okay. Clinique Naturally Glossy Mascara in Jet Black. That is, no, no, that was the discontinued. The new one is called High Impact. Yeah, I get the black. Yep. High Impact Mascara. High Impact feels like that would be the wrong adjective to describe what you just described. I had this, okay, when I was putting on, I had the same thought. I thought, I don't know what I would have named it because it wasn't the, the total experience. I liked it a lot. And to me, it's it was subtle. So I don't know, but I feel like that happens with names a lot, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's like marketing and then it doesn't really reflect what's in the tube, but that's a good one. Okay, moving on, we've got Jerry. Jerry, she says she misses it so much. It is Chanel Glossomer in Syrup. Jerry, I loved this lip gloss. This was like, people were doing Juicy Tubes and I was doing Syrup. It is, I'm just going to describe it for people who don't know. It's like a very translucent, no shimmer, but it's the perfect pink and peach, so cool and warm at the same time. I always think of like NARS Orgasm Blush. You know how it's both cool and warm and you're like, why is this so good? Take away the shimmer from that color and get the cool pink with the warm peach, very transparent. So it just like kind of like makes your lips a little bit just more flushed in a very natural way, no matter what you're coloring. Okay. 
what do we do for her? Yeah. Plus that tube is so like chic, right? Oh, yes. Okay. So, you know, fun fact that the Glossomer was replaced in 2017 by Rouge Coco Gloss Shine. Or I'm sorry, no shine. Rouge Coco Gloss. Okay. So they have like three different kind of versions of this lip gloss and it's just three different effects and they have a moisturizing Glossomer version. Okay. Within the new... Rouge Coco Gloss, the moisturizing Glossomers yes. are the closest replacement to the original Glossomer. Okay, continue. And they gave a, they recommend shade Physical. And when you look at it, the color, I have not tried this one myself, but the color is sort of exactly what you're describing, Jen. It's like in that peachy pink world, it looks like it's universal. If we can say any shade is universal. It looked at slightly milkier to me. Like the Syrup, you could almost see through the color, mm. whereas this one has a little bit more of a milky quality to it. So I feel like it might even have a teeny bit more color. But And Jen, I don't remember if the original formula was also kind of like, you know, skin, like lip care also, because this one has like um, coconut oil and peptides and some like goodies, extra goodies. So I feel like it like lives sort of in that treat. I don't know, loosely we can say it's sort of in that lip treatment world too, because it feels good and it's nourishing as well. I don't know if the old one was more like cosmetic focused, you know? Yeah. This is so funny now that I'm thinking about this. Um, the last three products that we did, they're all like those you but better my skin with a little good stuff, but better. The nail polish is like nail care yeah. with a little luminescence. This lip gloss is like your lips moisturized with a little bit of color. That mascara was like a very clean, not green clean, but I mean like very like fresh, not not Minimal. like chunky formula. Yeah. yeah. This is funny because this is what people miss when they when something gets discontinued. Like red lipstick, sure, I can go find another red, but it's like the thing that was just me, but better. Yeah. It's so individual, right? Yeah, it's like finding your perfect pair of jeans. Yeah. But I don't know. At the same time, like you kind of grow up, your perfect pair of jeans from 10 years ago is very different than your perfect pair of jeans today. So again, making the case that it's okay too, to Erica, like, I know, is that mean? Is <laughs> no, I think this is a deep thought. I think what you're saying to people is, I know you were attached to that. We did our homework for you, but like, maybe it's time to move on in a gentle way. I think it was a good analogy. Okay, good. Because I do think sometimes finding, sometimes it's meant to be that you, as I say that, I'm like, color science, please never take away my <laughs> eye concealer <laughs> slash SPF. I will die. You remind me of um, Dick Page came on the podcast. He talked to Jess. I could not stop laughing. He called it Mrs. Frodo, as in whatever the, oh my God, it's not Game of Thrones. What's the- Lord of the Rings. Tolkien, but thank you, Lord of the Rings. He's like, yes, Mrs. Frodo on her quest <laughs> to find that discontinued product. He says he gets it all the time as a makeup artist and he thinks it's hilarious that like women get this thing in their head and it's like, they're precious and they must go find it, you know? And I get it. That's the connection even to the wedding, right? It's that moment. It's like a product that made you feel good. It worked yeah. for you. Plus, you felt amazing in that moment. But I think what we're saying is you're missing that moment. You might not be missing the product. Yes. Oh, my God. I feel like I have, like, little chills from that, Jen, for myself. It's like, let's yeah. make some more moments with a product. This comes up a lot. Jess talks like this a lot. She gets very nostalgic about certain perfumes or things. And I'm always like, I don't think you miss the perfume. I think you are just enjoying the memory of what was going on in your life. Because beauty is so experiential. And, like, the scent of the product, the feel of it... You can't recapture that, guys. That said, <laughs> we'll help you try. So we have one more. Um, I think this was Andrea. She, this is funny. This goes with like the, the idea of just you, but better. She wanted Urban Decay's Go Naked fragrance. Oh, listen to this. Andrea says, I have the best summer memories tied to this scent and would love to find the next best thing. It was a rollerball perfume and it was discontinued a couple years ago. She acknowledges it herself right there. Like it's tied to great memories. Yeah, and I think this one, she had said it had notes of lavender and orange blossoms, or this was what the brand said. They gave us the notes. So a recommendation that of, of a couple scents that have these similar notes that Andrea could try, YSL Libra Parfum, because that has lavender, orange blossom, musk, accord, and vanilla. Now, Jen, I should tell you, I am not a fragrance expert. That is not my area of specialty. So I know like you can't just go notes. No, and I will also point out the notes are part of the marketing game, guys. This is why I've been trying to talk about perfume by the vibe. One brand, can you can see on their pyramid, lavender. 
it will be a different lavender accord from another brands. There'll be things like they now they name them funny names. I just saw a perfume come out and had friends musk instead of just musk. So that's also part of the marketing. So know that going in, like an orange blossom from Urban Decay might not be the orange blossom that's in YSL Libra, but it sounds like you got a similar blend of this warm floral. So that's a yeah. Good and then if we want a cheaper dupe, I, I hate saying the word cheaper, an inexpensive dupe, an accessible option. Dossier Floral Lavender Parfum. So there you go. Yeah. I, some people really like the dossiers. I think they're a really good option if you want to play with like different kinds of scents that you haven't tried yet before you commit to like the artistry of a really high level perfume. Because they're, I keep wanting to say cheap too. <laughs> fragrance, I don't know. That's inexpensive. I, I'm keeping my lips in. I'm just not, fragrance has never been my area of a specialty. So I'm going to trust this research and you, Jen, and... Also, again, maybe it's time to find a new scent. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll send her to go try those. Then have a great summer this summer wearing it. And that'll be your new favorite fragrance, Andrea. I hope that helps you. Wait, you're the best. We sent you on such a hunt. I was like, yeah, you came on the podcast. First, you have to do all this detective work. <laughs> I had to earn a spot. A spot. <laughs> Not at all. But I was like... I also could do that, but I was like, I knew you would be great at this because you are such a good service journalist. Like you always bring things I didn't think about, like as far as tips and stuff. So thank you for that. No, it's so fun. Jen, thank you. And it's so fun to like actually help people find something, as all the kidding aside about, find something new. This is the problem, troubleshooting that's like fun to do for an audience, don't you think? I totally do. I know that was a little bit of a special aside for the episode. We're still going to hit some news. We're going to talk about news a little bit and then raise some wands so let's just get into the rest of the episode. Okay, it is time for the news. I have to correct the record. I don't know if you listened to our episode last week. I had on my old intern, Tiffany, and she and I were like shooting the shit about fragrances with benefits, like Charlotte Tilbury's has mood-enhancing benefits. And I, I feel bad. I was like, oh, or a Bella, Bella Hadid's brand. I was, it's alcohol-free fragrances. And they also have like a... They're biphasic, so there's a skincare emulsion in there, and then the fragrance, so you shake it up and you spray it on, and it's both like a nice skincare, but also an alcohol-free fragrance. And I was like, well, I think Tiff said it, actually. Maybe I don't feel as bad now. She was like, did the world ask for this? I was like, same. Why would you want an alcohol-free fragrance? And then everybody came for me. Not came for me, but I got so many messages from listeners who were like, I'm sensitive to alcohol. Did you know this is a thing? I didn't, but it kind of makes sense. If you think about like all the, I feel like when something is alcohol free, people tend to advertise it, right? Like I get it on your face, yeah, right? Yeah. But it's your, I we, mean, it goes like, on your skin. Back in the day, Seabreeze was like alcohol and people have used rubbing alcohol and like pimples when they were younger, but you don't spray perfume on your face. So I just never thought, oh, someone might spray that in their wrists and their wrists get sensitive to the alcohols. Okay, guys, I stand corrected. I actually ordered the Orabella fragrances so I could try them. And you do and do shake them up and they feel very different. They feel wetter than a traditional fragrance. So there's like this moisturizing quality to it. I also think you can like spray more on. So I was worried it's got skincare benefits and I want to spray it all over. Did I just like overload on the perfume? I must have done, I mean, I'm gonna say 10 sprays, nine sprays of Window to Soul. That is one of the fragrances. And it's not too strong at all. Do you like it? Yeah. You can really load up on these without irritating your skin. And they have very transparent ingredient labels, which is a new trend I've been seeing in fragrances to not just say parfum and then tell you nothing else, but they include some of the essential oils that are in their parfum and then all the skincare ingredients and things like that. So it's a move towards transparency. I stand corrected. If you are allergic to alcohol, like Bella Hadid, I don't know if she's allergic, but she herself... I did more research. This is what I get for opening my big fat Well done. No, I love that you, I, I actually, you, I'm really curious about it. I heard about it, but I didn't dig too deep. But I love this fragrance transparency trend. And I, I just applaud it because I just think things get so secretive. And I like to know more. What's in the formulas? A little more, especially in the fragrance yeah. world. Yeah. Beauty Counter also came out with five completely transparent fragrances. Not that you can get them right now because that's a side note on the news. Greg Renfrew, the founder of Beauty Counter, bought her company back and is re-putting it back into operation. And she thought that would happen quickly and by May 1st. And now we just saw the news that it's not going to happen until the end of the year. So if you're like a beauty counter obsessive, you have a little bit longer to wait till you can get back in with your products. 
Okay, moving on. The lipstick effect. Have you written about the lipstick effect? Or you've definitely talked about it with industry people, right? Yeah. And even like the products that I've been uploading to Virtual Beauty Closet, like all the new launches, because I do new launches every month, the amount of, I was just noticing, like there's so many lip products. You could just tell by what's coming to market. Lips are really, really the focus right now. For people who haven't heard that, it's like the lipstick index, it claims that like when there's economic unrest, or right now, I think it's more that there's an unsureness and like interest rates are high in the States and also inflation. Like you go to the grocery store and you're like, how did I just spend $300? I mean, that's when people want to buy lipsticks because they like these little things that make them feel good when they're on a budget. But get this, I have always on this podcast credited that to Leonard Lauder coming up with that term. I found out as I was doing this research, he didn't come up with the concept. He just gave it a cute name. I mean, is that the story of beauty marketing or not? It was first posited in 1998 by economics and sociology professor Juliet Shore. So the idea that these little treats during times of economic unrest is not Leonard Lauder's invention, everybody. However, the news here is the new lipstick effect is actually the lip gloss effect. How many lip glosses are there right now? There's a lot, Jen. It's all, and it's it's kind of making me like feel a little self conscious about my matte lipstick that I still love. I'm like, stop. Can I? <gasps> oh no, are matte lipsticks the skinny jeans? I mean, I don't. I feel like that. It's. I think lips. I I would just put this whole category. I know lip glosses are the focus, it's but the I, lip effect, fullness, right? This is this like full lip. To me, this is very directly related to what's going on with kind of the backlash with filler. We're retreating from fillers and or they're getting dissolved. And I think you want to make your lips look more prominent or makeup's always been the easiest way to do that. And so I love, I actually love, love, love this trend because it's just like everyone can do it. It's so accessible. I get kind of frustrated when it's like a trend that it's just really hard to recreate for most people. And especially as Glossy you- lips. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easy. And for, I think in, for my age, in my forties, it, you know, you need lip liner with that for sure. Like I can't just, I can't just wear lip gloss. Any, I mean, I guess I could, but it doesn't sit right. It's just, it needs like some, a, a base. I a hundred percent agree. And I just think it's also interesting that the fact that we go in cycles, like the matte lip with the filler was in, and now a more natural version is you still want your lips to look full. Glosses are more reflective. So they make them generally look fuller. And they also have like that plumping effect because they lay thicker on the lips than a lipstick does. So the reason I bring this up is Vox did a whole article. It was about Summer Fridays, Road, Fenty, like all the lip glosses that everybody's into right now. Is that because you can get a lip gloss from Elf for like $4? Yeah, they're easy to, and they're, you don't need like help figuring it out whatsoever, right? It's just like, you put it on, see what feels good. I mean, I don't know the last. I don't know the last time you felt like a sticky lip gloss. I, I don't think sticky lip glosses. I think they've been erased. I think the technology has gotten really good because I never. I'm always like, oh, it's going to be sticky. I don't know if the younger generations are worried about sticky lips because so many of them don't have that anymore. I don't know what you think about that, Jen. You're about my age. You grew up on the juicy tubes and mm-hmm. lip gloss from Mac, and it was like if you were in a strong wind. <laughs> Like your entire head of hair would just be sucked to your mouth then. Like, forget about it. Yeah. They're great on set though when you were doing photographs. Like, oh, yeah. there's not, they looked so, so good, but they're not, they were not always the most wearable, moisturizing, comfortable. I guess. Yeah. These are like balm. They're like balmy. They, I mean, it's kind of that amazing. Summer Fridays one. I, yeah. Do you love can't it? Get enough of them. Yeah. It's called these names Dream Lip Oil. And, you know, the glosses too, Jen, I feel like the color, often the pigment is so forgiving. You have so much wiggle room. So yes. like five of the shades of the range might look great on you. So it's almost like you can wear more of the colors. They're just more versatile. They're sort of like Yeah, uh, it's like easy. watercolor paint compared to regular paint. You see whatever the base is through it. So it, like, it mm-hmm. works better with your color. I think you're totally right. You can get away with a lot more lip glosses. Actually, I have two of the Summer Fridays for that very reason. Anyway, lip gloss effect is the new lipstick. You heard it here on Fat Mascara. Okay, let's go to the science corner. First of all, it is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Skin cancer is very important, but I do say that to be like, every month is a month. (laughs) Jen, every day is a day. Like everybody wants a day. Everybody, not forget the months. Nail, nail care appreciation day. Donut day. I don't ever, I mean, it's just. Donut glaze, <laughs> skincare day. 
I will tell you, as someone who is on the receiving end of a lot of pitches from brands and publicists, it gives them a reason to reach out. I'm like, they're just doing their jobs. No, and if it's a day that kind of like is something that you're into, it's delightful, right? Like if you're really into mascara, mascara day is awesome, right? It's fun. Yeah. I will say the big bird day was just, this is different, but I'm a big birder and this time of year, so May 11th this year is the big bird day where people do backyard bird counts and like it's the peak of spring migration. So all the best birds are in North America before they go up to like Canada and Alaska and everything. So like I'm in heaven. It's like big bird day, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Skin Cancer Awareness Month, which is May. And I have some new news. It's about outdoor workers. So I want everybody to talk to the outdoor workers in their life, or if they're an outdoor worker, maybe you're an EMT. I also, I was thinking about this. EMTs are absolutely outdoor workers. They're like police officers, people that are on the streets, but also landscapers, people who work in construction big time, people who work in traffic, crossing guards, et cetera. Turns out outdoor workers are far more likely to get sunburned and tanned, which of course puts you at a risk for skin cancer. This is according to a new American Academy of Dermatology survey of more than a thousand U.S. adults. So they're more likely to get sunburned and tan. And then I thought this was interesting. I don't know about you. Outdoor workers are also more likely to believe tanning myths. Yeah. I, I mean, not to get all gender here, Jen, but part of me wondered if this is like a dude problem, sort of, because Think about who has, I mean, again, I know this is like, I don't want to be stereotypes. It's a lot of guys. These are a lot of jobs that guys have. And I, the reality is- Yeah, let me give you the stat. Hold on. It's 31% of outdoor workers believe a base tan will prevent sunburns. That's like a third. That's a lot. Whereas only 23% of Americans believe this. By the way, that is absolutely false. A base tan is just a sign that you've already started the damage. But it's actually true that outdoor workers tend to protect themselves more with hats, which of course are important because you don't want to just put sunscreen on, but you can still get burned and get a tan when you're wearing a hat. And in fact, 31% of outdoor workers believe that tanning is safe, even if they don't burn, whereas 20% of Americans who aren't outdoor workers think that, meaning this isn't true. Like even the tan part is bad. I just never had thought about this aspect of skincare safety. No, it's interesting, but I feel like it makes sense. And it's also, I think about when you're outdoors too, think of all the factors that make sunscreen like challenging, like sweating and reapplication every two hours. And my hands are slippery. If I'm working on a construction site, I can't have like siliconed up sunscreen application hands. Yeah. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I, I think it's, it speaks to like education, like it makes me feel good, better about how we're constantly writing these stories, reporting on the skin cancer rates and the importance of sunscreen, and even like getting really nitty gritty about how do you, how much sunscreen you actually need, like an actual serving that should go on your face. I recently did a story for Women's Health, and they brought it to life in such a cool way. They like did videos, and you're supposed to have like two fingertips worth of sunscreen for your whole face and your neck, which mm-hmm. who does that? I mean, how many people are actually putting that much? Charlotte sunscreen? Palomino. Okay, so. Right. Is she working outdoors in the sun? I don't know. So it's like an education thing, motivation too. We're, I think about it, like we're really thinking about, a lot of us are trying to prevent wrinkles, hyperpigmentation. I am thinking about skin cancer when I'm putting on my SPF, but I'm I'm probably thinking of the vanity aspects a little bit more, Jen, if I'm being totally honest with you. Yeah. It was funny. After I saw the survey, I also saw that Kelly Slater, the surfer, just launched a sunscreen. Well, it's a brand called Freaks of Nature, and there is a sunscreen in it as well as a moisturizer. And well, speaking of, athletes are absolutely within this class of outdoor workers. Totally, totally. I mean, he's like the epitome of an outdoor worker. But I was like, well, this is rich. He had tweeted back in 2011, I almost never use sunscreen. So he is the guy in this survey who like didn't think about this and therefore he doesn't have the knowledge and therefore has higher skin cancer rates. Clearly he's come around because now he made this sunscreen. So... Yeah, it's an education thing. Probably he didn't know back then and he's learned since he's gotten older. Maybe he had his first mole check and there were some messy moles and he had to get a couple removals. I think it's all to say like, we have to stay vigilant in telling people to make sure to stay protected from the sun. Like skin cancer rates are not going down. I mean, the nice thing too, I think is all the new... I think like every year the formulas get more palatable. Like even I was on, I went to Arizona for spring break with my family. My husband really liked a formula, which I was so happy because, you know, again, he doesn't, I have to remind him to use sunscreen and it's not like he's eager to put it on. I'm pretty sure this is not embargoed, Jen. The new Basque, I don't think it's embargoed. 
Tell me what it is and I can always it's take in, it out. It's like the Basque Invisible Gel Sunscreen. It's their newest formula. Wait, tell me about Basque. I don't know what that is. It's a sunscreen line. B-A-S-K. B-A-S-K. No. Oh, they have- I'm not, This is why I have you on the oh show. My gosh. Because you have encyclopedic product knowledge. They have a lot of sunscreens and, you know, they have the sprays. They have traditional formulas, but I think this one is- Their new daily invisible gel there it SPF is. 40 just came out. It's a silky, non-oily- I'm Jared loved- That's my husband- and I used up, it Jared? too. And it did you like that olive derived squalene? It Jared? feels like nothing. Like you put it on, and there is literally no tackiness. It's like actually perfect for that person who's like, I cannot stand the feel of anything on my skin. So even less than like an unseen sunscreen from Supergoop, which is like the category standard, I guess. Now. Yeah, I would have to put it head to head. I'd be, you know, I'd be curious. I'd love, I, I think I have to have him try those two because I have a lot more, I'm okay with a little bit of texture and, you know, feeling. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I think that's the other thing too, if we're gender, let, let's be honest, it is a gendered thing. Women are used to putting things on their faces. We're used to skincare. We're used to having the feel of makeup on our face, even though I barely feel it. And a guy is just like, not used to that at all. That's, I Most think, absolutely. Men. I think it makes a lot of sense. And like, I was just excited that he was into a product. I don't know. Cause my husband's very like minimal. <laughs> so <laughs> when there's interest in a product, my like little beauty editor, like, I don't know, my little, I sh- fireworks go See? off. I'm like, yes. yeah, you understand what I do for a living. <laughs> he's like, what's all that stuff in your office? And you're like, now you understand. I'm going to send him like he's doing camp this summer. He's a teacher in the summer. He's doing this camp thing. So he's going to be one of these outdoor workers. Okay. okay. And so I think, you know what? I'm going to take it my personal job to help him like educate his coworkers. Maybe I'll send them some sunscreens. Oh, that's such a good idea. Send him off with some of your samples. So sunscreen's expensive too. And I get that that might also be play into this. Like if you buy the nice clear ones, this actually is not bad. This is $28, but you're not going to put that all over your body. That's for your face. That's for your face. Yeah. I think that's a good one. And I think a lot of people will enjoy that one. I got to get into this basque. Uh, This is new to me, but it looks really nice. I mean, the packaging is great. It's just, it's like- Not really dry down? I don't know the history of the brand though. I'm kind of mad at myself. I'm going to have to go back and look, but they've been around for a couple of years, I think. I think they're relatively newer, but- Okay. We can't beat ourselves up too bad. There's so many products. How can we know them all? True. All right. Speaking of that, let's go raise some wands to things we are liking right now. Summer is fast approaching, which means it's shapewear season. Just kidding. It's really wedding season. But I just got an invitation to a wedding in Philadelphia, and guess what I'll be wearing? Honey love. I'm not sure about the rest of the outfit or the dress, but the shapewear is going to be honey love. Here's why. Honey love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating when you're wearing shapewear. Plus, They have lingerie-inspired design details that you'll want to show off, and all their fabrics are breathable to keep you nice and cool, which is perfect for hot days. Let me tell you a story. I remember being at a wedding, this was a few years ago, pre-Honey Love, and I wore a jumpsuit, and I wasn't sure if the bathroom door locked well, but I had to take off the entire jumpsuit and then roll down the shapewear to pee, and I was like holding onto the back of the door at the same time, completely naked in the bathroom, and it took so long, and I caused this whole backup of the bathroom line, and after that, I was like, never again. Until Honey Love came along. Honey Love's superpower shorts have a 100% cotton gusset so you don't have to wear underwear underneath. And there's a convenient opening in the underwear area so you don't have to take off the whole thing to go to the bathroom. It's so easy. Honey Love products make you look good and feel good. Whether it's for a wedding, event, an everyday boost of confidence, Honey Love is the perfect plus one. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash mascara. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off. That's honeylove.com slash mascara. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Honeylove.com slash mascara for 20% off. The summer vibes are just getting started, so shape your life with Honey Love. Hey everyone, it's Jen, and I have decided this is going to be the summer of uniform dressing. I'm going to have a few pieces on heavy rotation, and I'm telling you right now, they're all going to be linen, and they're all going to be from Quince. I don't know why I'm going so hard on linen right now, but it just feels right. And Quince specializes in timeless pieces made of premium fabric, and the best part is that all the Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. 
They have premium European linen dresses, blouses, and shorts from $30. I am personally very into the 100% European linen pants. They're cropped and easy. There's even a cute pinstriped version. And when I wear them, I look like I just stepped off a yacht. Do I have a yacht? No. Do I know what yachters wear? No, but that's the vibe. The linen pants come in sizes extra small to 3X and they're less than $40. Okay, like 10 cents less, they're $39.90. But the quality is excellent and they wash really well. How does Quince do it? They cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings on to us. Plus, Quince works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. Get warm weather ready with Quince. Go to quince.com slash fat mascara for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's quince.com, Q-U-I-N-C-E, quince.com slash fat mascara to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash fat mascara. Okay, everyone, I am one of those people who, when it comes to wellness, sorry, but it's got to fit into the pockets of my day. Five minutes here, seven minutes there, when I'm like in the kitchen and I'm microwaving something long, it's got to be convenient. And that is why Aloe Moves works for me. My mindset has changed. The app makes it easy for me to keep my wellness routine on track because they have everything in one place and bite-sized little bits. Yoga, Pilates, fitness classes, mindfulness, self-care tips, healthy recipes, so much more. From beginner to advanced, Allo Moves has the flow or class that's going to fit into your schedule. Their classes range from five minutes to an hour, depending on what you're feeling that day. You know what feeling I'm feeling most days? I'm feeling 10 minutes. I've been doing that's good. Joanna Thompson's. Right? That's about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. 10 minutes. Joanna Thompson does these yoga lattes in 10. One day will be abs. One day will be arms. Today, Jess, is booty day. And we're just <laughs> going to get it done all in 10 minutes. If you're trying to get a good sweat, then you've got to try their award-winning workouts like the sweat-inducing yoga flows or the reformer Pilates workouts without weights. You can also find stress relief with meditations, affirmations, face yoga, gua sha, learn to do dry brushing. How many times have we talked about dry brushing on this podcast? Aloe Moves will teach you how to do it. Unlock your personal wellness routine with Allo Moves. Go to allomoves.com now and use the code MASCARA20 for an exclusive 30-day free trial and enjoy 20% off an annual membership. That's allomoves.com, code MASCARA20. Allomoves.com, code MASCARA20. Okay, it is time to raise a wand. This is the part of the podcast where we share things that we love. We raise a wand to them. It's a mascara wand. I feel like once every couple months, I have to remind people where this terminology came from. Like, if you're a new listener, you're like, what the hell are they talking what about? What is this is wand? Are we in Harry Potter? <laughs> What's happening? No, it's a mascara wand. We're like, we, we love stuff. Okay, so listener raise a wand. I got this text. So our phone number is 646-481-8182. Leave us a voicemail. I don't pick up the phone, but you can also text. Once I said that to people, now everybody is texting me instead of leaving voicemails. May I remind you, we are an audio podcast. To make this show come alive, multiple voices help. (laughs) So I love the voicemails because then I can play them. But, you know, I still get lots of good texts. I'm just going to read this one. I actually texted this person back and I was like, can you leave it as a voicemail? So if she leaves that, I'll put that here. But if not, here's what she said. Raising a wand can confirm that the vacation jelly is an exact recreation of the Ban de Soleil sunscreen. Wait, this is so funny, Erica. I didn't even think of this. I love when we have a theme. Ban de Soleil orange jelly sunscreen discontinued years ago. Can't find it anywhere. So this product, Vacation the Company, the fragrance company, they replicated the sunscreen down to the gorgeous scent, which is why people love. Do you remember the original Ban de Soleil orange jelly? I think if I smelled it, I would, I think, because I, it's in my memory bank, but not, like, I can't articulate it. But I do think it would take, yeah, how about I you? I remember, and I remember buying it, and it was SPF 4, and I was like, <laughs> cool. Yes. I don't think those even exist anymore. I was like, yeah, I'll get a tan. It gives you such a sheen. It smells gorgeous. Anyway, the listener says, I'll definitely be using it for the glow. I have it on my hands right now, and it isn't greasy. I could see it being a nice cuticle oil as well. I have my last 
tube of BDS. Oh, she still has a tube. Good for her of the Band de Soleil. She says, quote, it's a sad busted tube. I would occasionally <laughs> sniff it like some weirdo. If Carlos Hubert worked on the scent, please tell him he made a woman in North Carolina cry happy tears. Thank you to our listener in North Carolina. Also, this is so funny. Carlos Hubert, you, do you know him, the guy that did Arquiste? fragrances. I feel like you keep, ta- have you been mentioning him? It, Cause I feel like he's it, come up on your podcast a few times, right? Am I making that yes, up? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's like the last six podcasts. It's just funny how it's just in the zeitgeist. So yes, he worked on the fragrance for that. So woman in North Carolina, she didn't leave her name. Thank you for the razor wand for the new vacation jelly. That sounds delightful. That was amazing. And her description was amazing too. I, yeah. How do you follow that, Jen? That's tough. I don't. Our <laughs> listeners are even, I like, sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to hand over the show to them. They're the best, but you can follow it. You're great. So okay. I want you to raise one. What do you got for me? Okay. So Jen, you see me with this middle part. This is like a new version of Erica, my Bob. Like I have been a side part. I want to, I'm not going to call myself a girly, but that's just the way my hair has fallen for so long. But my last haircut, we we moved it to the middle for a few different reasons. We we're just kind of testing things out. So my part was so stubborn. So getting your hair to train from the side part where it's lived for a decade. It's like how to train your dragon, Jen. It was like, I'm telling you, it was like a beast that was like, no, 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 no. So anyway, so I'm obsessed with these like creaseless hair clips. Okay. And you see them all the time when when celebrities are getting their hair done. Like you'll see all those like cool little clips. No, when they're getting their makeup done to like keep their hair off their face well, also, without messing up the yes, hairstyle. Yes, traditionally for makeup, but you'll also see some hairstylists use it almost like the same way you use Velcro rollers as a way to set your hair, right? Oh, sure. Like a finger wave. Yes. Like to create texture and, and bends. So anyway, I've been using, it's a whole category. I think the ones I have are from Kristen S and that's, they're super affordable. I think you get like four for like $10 or something. And I like, I, when my hair is wet, cause I'm like a wash and go person. Like I am not good at heat styling my hair. So I will like clip it here and it, and, and keep it in as long as I can. And then I've got this like funny uh, calic in the back here and I'll clip this guy down and it really does, it, it kind of helped my hair, like, kind of get into the middle. It's it's kind of wild. So that's one of my reasons. So you would make a center part, and it would keep wanting to flop back to the side part that you've had for years. Yeah, it was and just creaseless lifted. creaseless clips. And then you don't have a dent, but it's sort of just dried as the center part. Have you found the more you've used these, the, like, more it's easily it's getting into the center part now? Yeah, I think it's starting to settle a little bit. It still needs a little help, but it's not as hard to get it to stay, you know? Yeah. I just saw those from Brow & Co., which is Christy Stryker's new brow line. She has some of the clips, almost not as a hair thing, but to keep the hair out of the way when you're doing your brows. But like you said, they can be used to train as well. It's an excellent razor wand. How to train your dragon. If I could. <laughs> okay, your calic. <laughs> okay, Jen, I have one more. Raise a wand. Tell me. It's from Ali Oop. It's called 11th Hour Eyeshadow Stick. I don't know if your listeners are all into eyeshadow sticks. There's like, this is a big category for eyeshadow. I think it's like a really easy shortcut. For me, I found like the perfect taupe because taupe is sort of that color that goes, it can like give you crease definition when your eyes are starting to get a little more hooded. And you just need a little bit of like light color. You need light definition. You just put it in. You can blend it with your finger or with like a brush. And it's just like subtle and pretty and nice and easy. That's Ali Oop's whole thing, actually. I really like their mascara. I've recommended it to a bunch of people. It's a tubing mascara. But it's like they do almost like It Cosmetics, but even a more less glammy version of It Cosmetics. They do multitasking, easy, one and done, solves your problems, like you but better kind of stuff. Yeah. And just, I would say be gentle with the container because, you know, those eyeshadow sticks, this is just a side tip. If you are an eyeshadow stick person, I've had many of them pop out of the packaging on several occasions. <laughs> per scent, because you can twist them up. And if you twist too high, those sticks, the creaminess of the formula, it's like, boop, and the whole like thing falls rocket. off. Rocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And because they're so thin. Yeah. So there's no like heft to the diameter of it. So it's just like, there it goes. You just lost like $20 worth of eyeshadow. Good job, Jen. Usually when that happens though, I'll like rub it with alcohol and then put it back in and like slide it back down and hope for the best. I do that. I, I don't throw it out because I'm just like, I unless I'm, it was ready to go, unless it was like 
a color I wasn't really using. Okay, so Alley Oop, 11th Hour Eyeshadow, and they call it an eyeshadow and liner in one, but it's just the shadow stick I call it that too. I really hope it's not discontinued, Jen. Wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> well, it isn't right now. We cannot make any promises for the future. This is a newish brand. I feel like it's going to be around. Listen, everybody go buy it so that it's popular and then it won't be discontinued for Just Erica. to stick to our theme. Just to stick to our theme. <laughs> <laughs> She's bringing it all full circle for the end of the podcast. Okay, I'll raise my wand really quick so we can get out of here. This is one of those razor wands. Sometimes this happens to me where I'm like, I don't want to like this. I don't want to like it. I'm a cynic. Do I need this product? I don't need this. Setting mists have always been a thing for me. I tried them when they first came out. Everybody was obsessed with that Urban Decay one. Yeah, Like it sets to your face. I think it was of the era of the YouTubes, the YouTubers, the 2012 to 2018 era when like you baked, you contoured, you did all that work and then you set it. And I was like, back in the day, people were using Elnet hairspray to set. I'm like, I'm not spraying that on my face. But Morphe... I was trying out their foundation and I was like, all right, I'll try it. It's the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I don't know what I was thinking because I was expecting hairspray to come out. It feels like a cucumber facial mist. It feels moisturizing. It doesn't feel sticky. And so I was like, there's no way this is going to keep my makeup in place. The other thing is it didn't dry down tacky or matte. It left like a luminous sheen, more luminous than I'm normally doing. But I have dry skin, so that looked really nice. And then my makeup stayed longer. I'm always complaining about how my face eats blush. So I like recently got into blush toppers. Don't know if you know that was a thing. I just learned about boyfriend blush, Jen. So I I don't know if what's boyfriend blush. Oh shoot. TikTok just fed this to me. It's like your blush, your blush is more like sort of like ruddy looking. It's sort of like if you look at the uh Oh, this is what Sabrina Carpenter did at Coachella. Yeah. It's almost like it's like if you have very fair skin. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you lamb chops, like the little redness that That's comes down low. That's what it is. They're calling it boyfriend blush. Boy, yeah, I think it was it was at the Met. Somebody mentioned it at the Met Gala. But anyway, I was like intrigued by. I love blush trends because I feel like my cheeks are changing. So I'm like, which blush is going to be the right? What's going to be the best Maybe it's thing boyfriend for my? Blush. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, for me, it's more that yeah, like you put that color on, you want. I worked on it. I want to stay looking like this for the rest of the day. Wait, when do you use it, Jen? Like, are you using it for like, I'm going to, it's an event day. It's a... Kind of. You're absolutely right. It's when I'm running around on the subway all day, which is when I usually, I think I look great. And usually all of my work events, I try to put in one day. So by the time I get to the third one and I need to look presentable because I'm talking to beauty industry people, I'll like catch a glimpse of myself in a window or my phone. I'll be like, what happened? Like, where did your face go? Not that I care. I still walk in. I was like, let me try this. I put my whole face of makeup and my sunscreen on, and then I misted with this, and it really makes your makeup last, but does not feel sticky. I'm not going to say Jared would appreciate it. I don't think Jared could get behind a face, a <laughs> continuous setting face mist for Morphe. I just feel like he's never going to go there. Hey, this is like next, this is like beyond, yeah. What his... if he goes to camp this summer and he brings his sunscreens for everyone, then he's like, guys, I've got for you face setting mist. So after we do our sunscreen, we're going to set it with this spray. Do you think that he'll be popular at camp? Also, I love that you're sending your husband to camp. I want him to make new friends this summer, so I don't think it's a bad idea, Jen. (laughs) Well, we need a whole other podcast about how men don't know how to make friends. That's a whole other podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not generalizing to our our male listeners. No, it's a good topic. I just also just love the idea of sending a husband off to camp. I mean, I know he's working. Yeah, and he's a teacher. He normally is off every summer, and this is sort of this new adventure this summer, and it's sort of helped with our girls being able to camp at a better rate. It's sort of like a really good— Your kids will be at the same camp where he's working. Yeah, that was like an intentional decision. what are you going to do while the family's gone? I'm available. I'm available for work, world. No, I'm going to—yeah, I'm going to try to do more writing. I'm just really going to try to dig into all these projects I have kind of cooking. It'll be good for me because the summer is kind of a tough time when people are home more— and yeah. you work from home and you work, you live in a New York apartment, it can be a little stressful. So I'm very excited about this summer. I think I'm going to be very productive. Meanwhile, I'm going to link to your Instagram on the show notes and watch our listeners start just DMing you all summer long. Like, can you help me find a discontinued <laughs> dupe for this product? Sorry if that happens. I should create, you know what though? It's a good idea. Like part of me is like, maybe I should create like a dupe category in virtual beauty closet. I know like dupes are controversial in some ways. We just come up with a better name because it's not like a dupe because we're or the just discontinue. trying to get like a, yeah yeah it's like a resurrection or something. resurrection that's a little religious but we'll work on the name i like this jen 
Yeah, look, as you are leaving, like, out the studio door, I'm like, by the way. Jen, if you have another assignment, if you have, like, another research project, just holler and let me know. I'll be available. So Jess is coming back from sabbatical in two weeks. But I was like, oh, we're going to change something up and bring some more exciting things to the podcast. Maybe we should do something with Erica more regularly. Okay, people are going to have ideas. Okay. We're going to group think this. So Fat Mascara listeners, you heard that. I will let Erica go. You are so great. Thank you so much for coming on Fat Mascara. This was like too, you made it too fun. I'm almost it's like, supposed to be fun. this was like so fun. Wait, let me just add this. I don't know if you're going to cut it, but I am such a fan. I mean, I've known you my entire career basically, Jen, but I'm such a fan of this podcast. So like, honestly, I've been playing it cool, but this whole time I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be on Fat Mascara. What? Wait, what does this say about me if I don't cut this? I'm going to leave this in, but I'm leaving it in just to pretend like it naturally happens. But I understand the ego of leaving this in. Like, I was like, you make me look silly now because if I don't cut it, then it's like, oh, she wanted everybody to hear you blow smoke up my butt. (laughs) All right, I'm done. Everybody go get your beauty sleep. We will see you on Friday. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product with you or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. You'll know real when you get it. It'll say eBay Authenticity Guarantee, and you'll feel it. Maybe it's a head-turning handbag, a watch that says it all, jewelry that makes you look like the gem, sneakers and streetwear so fresh every step feels fly. When it comes to style and luxury, eBay gets it. They're making sure the things that you love are checked by experts. Not just any experts, specialized experts. Real people who love this stuff. With real hands-on authentication experience. So when you see that shiny blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, shop with confidence. Every inch, stitch, sole, and logo is verified authentic through a detailed inspection. That's how you know that eBay's got your back. Because when you finally step into those sneakers, put on that watch, get your real gold glow up, swing that handbag over your shoulder, or step out in that streetwear, you'll realize that feeling is unlike any other. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that feeling of real is always in reach. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms.